we would like to have two points. I mean, there's no doubt. It makes things a little bit more difficult, but, you know, I mean, just uh, got to move on here. Put that one behind you and you know, give Ottawa credit. They played really hard, played really well. Can you give us an update on the status of both of your goaltenders? Um, well, I mean, the one goal he played in the end, there's, I don't think there's anything wrong with him. Um, the other one has an upper body injury and he couldn't continue after the first period. Was there some uncertainty, though? I mean, the team called up Spencer Martin at some point today. Was there uncertainty? Well, there's a sickness going around. And uh, so we didn't want at the last minute something to happen. So, I mean, he was under emergency. If it was if it was needed, it was deemed it wasn't needed. And so that was it. Was it something that got worse during the day? With, what? Uh, with Demko and his illness? Because Demko's not ill. There's no illness in Demko. I don't know what we're all, oh, excuse me, all looking at. There's, why, Demko could have played. He was happy to have played. But we were planning on going with Halak the whole time. How much do you lament sort of the late stages of the second period where you guys controlled most of the play? But We would have, once we started missing on that one power play, I thought, uh-oh, this is, this is because you only get so many kicks at the can. You only get so many chances, and uh, and once you weren't scoring, it just and they were, you know, they were in it and they were they were not backing up. I thought, okay, the third period's going to be a, a tough period, um, and you know, consequently, they got two goals. But you know, I give our team credit. I mean, we didn't quit, and in the last ten minutes, I thought we had all the chances. What was your message to the group after that? Pardon me, I haven't talked to them. I'll talk to them tomorrow. I'll talk to them tomorrow. What will I don't, we, that's why we don't talk to them after the game on a loss. I mean, I got to figure something uh, out. They got to figure it out. And you don't want to speak emotionally. You want to speak, you know, analytically and intelligently. So I mean, if I could have gone in there and and said a, a number of things tonight, but uh, I'll wait till tomorrow. So, I mean, things have gone so well from it's the first you know disappointment in a while, and obviously mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a big. So how important will the, the psychology and the mindset be to get ready for the return? Well, I mean, it really, the, we still have to win. I mean, if we still win, I believe we're, we're in. So, I mean, uh, uh, so, I mean, it's nothing's really changed. I mean, we were going to, we were going to be allowed one mulligan uh, somewhere along the road. We were thinking that it might be on the road trip at some point, but uh, uh, so now we just have to, uh, go back when you know what we've responded really well in the in the past like I mean when we lost a, a few at home to Detroit and Buffalo and that and then we went on the road and, and beat Colorado and then lost in a shootout or lost in overtime to Minnesota I mean that's the kind of mentality we need I mean um, you know and that's uh, that's you know I mean this is a group that has fought for four and a half months almost five months now and they're not going to quit now just for a little bit of clarity uh, like Halak would it Will he travel? No. He won't travel? No. Not that I know of. I haven't talked to them, but after the first period, it, it didn't sound like he was going to be able to travel. Hey, uh, JT mentioned a lot of teams stretch the ice, but do you recall a team stretching the ice as much as they tried to, like cherry pick? They, uh, I mean, it was just really the one line that was doing it. I mean, uh, Formentin can do it because he's got such great speed. If he gets one-on-one, uh, -on -one, he's, uh, he's pretty dangerous. He can go around you. But, I mean, we acknowledged it and we knew about it. I mean, sometimes we forget about it a little bit. But, I mean, uh, it was mentioned to them before the game, the pre-scout, before the third period, before the second period. So, uh, you know, sometimes uh, the game gets a little uh, large and, and, you know, you get focused on one thing and you forget about something else, and I think uh, uh, on a couple of those breakaways, that's exactly what happened. Uh, I need every point. Not much changes for us. Uh, it's pretty unrealistic to think you're going to win 13 games in a row to get in the playoffs. So, uh, got a point. Came back, came from behind there. Everybody's. Uh, we played a lot of hockey, so I mean, it's um, you know that's that team plays really hard. Uh, they pushed us all the way to the end. We got a lot of chances there at the end that easily could have went, but. A lot of chances in the second where we could have kind of broke the game open. Their goalie played really well tonight, uh, but nothing really changes for us. We got to run the tables no matter what. Everyone's obviously tired with all the games that have been played, but how important is 
is psychology right now and having the right mindset after you finally lose a game and you go into this difficult road trip? It's all psychology. Like, it's all mental. We've talked about that before. Uh, everybody's played a lot of hockey this year in the league. There is no excuses for travel or playing 75, 80 games. It's it's part of the, what we get paid to do. Um, it's all mental. If you can mentally wake up and get ready to play this time of year, you're going to be a step ahead. I know we asked last time you were in here, you got to 90 <coughs> points. Does the 30 goal milestone mean all right. Not right now, no. I, yeah, it's nice to score, but I've, I don't know how many times I'm going to tell you guys no. Is there a team that stretches you as much as they do, to, like literally cherry picking behind your D? Like, to yeah, there's some lines around the league that play like that. Uh, they feed off the, like, as soon as the puck's turned over, they're behind you. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess it's effective if, uh, you know, it, it's effective, if, I guess, if it's working. If it's not, you know, they're going to give up a lot of chances. They give up a ton of chances to us tonight. So, I mean, um, you know, the kid in the third there, I mean, he's one of the faster guys, you know, playing. So, I mean, it's a hell of a play. We've talked so much about the next man up mentality. Uh, in the last few weeks here, it's the same kind of thing tonight when uh, Yarrow goes down. Yeah, uh, you know our starter goes in. So it's uh, you know Drimmer's always ready to play. Uh, you know they came out and had a really good first four or five minutes of the third period, kind of set us back, and then you know after that we kind of poured it on again like we did in the uh, for most of the second period there. So I mean, I don't think we played a bad game by any means. I think we played pretty well again. You know back to backs are hard, but they run a back to back too. But it's one of those games where everybody's on a back-to-back, so you get to overtime and a shootout, and like anything could happen. Frustrating, you guys didn't get more out of the final 15 minutes in the second period because you dominated. Yeah, game. yeah. I mean, I mean, we weren't that frustrated, but I mean, we knew, you know, we were, we, we could have scored on many chances there and just couldn't really solve them. I know, uh, you know, I think Mizey hit the crossbar in the third too. Um, I think our power play, you know, we had a lot of zone time. I don't think we we didn't really get the looks we, the quality looks that we. That we wanted, um, but that uh, it was a hard-fought game. You know.